Have you ever wondered why Laura is such a timeless classic? This movie from 1944 grabs your attention right away with its mystery and drama. But there's more to it than you might think. As you dig deeper, you'll find lots of interesting, surprising, and sometimes sad facts that add depth to the story. What keeps this movie so important in the film world? And what lesser known stories do you find fascinating? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your special memories or personal experiences with this amazing movie. Keep watching to learn more about Laura and join the discussion. The 1944 movie Laura had a big effect on popular culture. When it came out, people really liked its interesting story and characters. Critics also liked how the story was told and how it looked. The movie had a big influence on film noir. It's often seen as a classic example of this type of movie known for its dark lighting and characters who aren't clearly good or bad. Laura's mysterious murder story and surprising ending have inspired many other filmmakers and writers. Besides being a movie, Laura also inspired other things. There was a radio show and a TV series based on it, which explored more about the characters and their world. Fans and collectors also wanted to get things like posters and other items related to the movie. Even though it's been a long time since it came out, Laura is still seen as a classic. Its influence on film noir and its interesting characters and story are still talked about today. Vincent Price was supposed to sing You'll Never Know in a party scene, but the song got cut. In the French dubbed audio, Shelby Carpenter's first name was changed to Robert. Initially, Vera Caspery wrote her story as a play titled Ring Twice for Laura in 1939. Later, she turned it into a novel called Laura. The novel appeared in Collier's Magazine from October 17 to November 28, 1942, under the title Ring Twice for Laura. In 1971, she mentioned in Saturday Review of Literature that Otto Preminger showed interest in collaborating on a revised version of the play. However, they couldn't settle on the dramatization. Caspery reworked the play with George Sklar in 1942, which premiered in London in 1945 and on Broadway on June 26, 1947. Preminger, along with Jay Drattler, worked on the screenplay and later Samuel Defenstein and Elizabeth Reinhardt joined the team. Jean Tierney underwent 28 costume changes for her role in the film. 20th Century Fox enlisted Johnny Mercer to write lyrics for Laura's theme, which became a hit and was recorded by various artists including Frank Sinatra and Ella Fitzgerald. The movie is listed in 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, edited by Steven Schneider. In Otto Preminger's autobiography, it's revealed that Daryl F. Zanuck initially considered John Hodiak for the role of Detective Lieutenant Mark McPherson. Hedda Hopper's interview with Clifton Webb on his first day of shooting shed light on an interesting start to the filming process. Webb disclosed that they began with a scene set in a luxurious bathroom because his costumes had encountered an unexpected delay in Kansas due to a flood. Gene Tierney shared the screen with Dana Andrews in multiple films, including Laura. Their collaboration extended to Tobacco Road, Bell Star, The Iron Curtain, and Where the Sidewalk Ends. It's evident that Laura brought together a talented cast, each contributing to the film's success in their own way. David Raxon's Laura's Theme, featuring Johnny Mercer's lyrics, inspired notable recordings by various artists in the mid-1940s. Woody Herman and his orchestra, Dick Hames, Johnny Johnston, and Frank Sinatra all contributed versions to the music scene of that era. Gene Tierney, dressed by pioneering costumer Bonnie Cashin, showcased modern designs in jackets, coats, and capes in the film. Cashin's influence extended beyond the screen as she later designed for coach handbags and numerous other brands. Although John Brom was initially approached to direct, he declined the opportunity. The film Laura from 1944 remains notable for its timeless music and influential costume design, despite its directorial adjustments. The haunting theme melody of the movie was inspired by a letter composer David Raxon received from his wife. The lyrics were later added by Johnny Mercer, though Otto Preminger, the director, disliked them. Dana Andrews, who appeared in five films with Gene Tierney, including Laura, delivered notable performances. According to Otto Preminger, he had to earn the respect of the cast, who seemed hostile towards him initially, except for Clifton Webb. It was rumored that Preminger intended to fire certain cast members, but Dame Judith Anderson confronted him on set, challenging him to show her how to improve her performance. Despite initial challenges, the movie Laura remains a classic in cinema history, remembered for its compelling narrative and memorable performances. Preminger, upon witnessing Clifton Webb's performance in Blythe Spirit, selected him for the role of Waldo Lidecker, replacing Laird Kreger, who passed away shortly before filming began. 
Webb's portrayal added depth to the character, contributing significantly to the film's success. The Screen Guild Theater aired radio adaptations of the film in 1945 and 1950, featuring Gene Tierney, Dana Andrews, and Clifton Webb reprising their roles. Tierney recalled Preminger's demanding work ethic, describing him as relentless in pursuit of perfection. Despite long hours on set, Preminger maintained unwavering energy, driving the cast to deliver their best performances. His dedication and meticulous approach undoubtedly shaped the film's outcome, solidifying its place in cinematic history. The final film of actress Aileen Pringle was a significant moment in cinematic history. 20th Century Fox boss Daryl F. Zanuck had his own ideas for casting, but Otto Preminger had a different vision. Zanuck favored Jennifer Jones, Laird Krager, and John Hodiak for key roles, but Preminger insisted on Gene Tierney, Clifton Webb, and Dana Andrews, respectively. One of the most memorable aspects of this film is its haunting theme. When asked about turning down the role, Hedy Lamar mentioned receiving the script, but not the score. The Laura theme became iconic, resonating with audiences for generations. In a subtle nod to a pivotal scene from a certain film, Georgie Girl playfully references the iconic bathtub moment with Charlotte Rampling's character, a violinist taking center stage. The film's creators initially considered Fox contract player Laird Kreger for the role of Waldo Lidecker. However, Otto Preminger, the director, argued against it, fearing that Kreger's recognizability as a villain would spoil the plot's twists. Interestingly, both Walter Lang and Lewis Milestone declined opportunities to direct, citing a lack of enthusiasm for the script. This rejection ultimately paved the way for Preminger to take the helm. Vincent Price, according to his daughter Victoria, credited Gene Tierney's unique beauty and acting prowess for the success of the movie. He believed her timeless, and imperfect beauty significantly contributed to its popularity. Lieutenant McPherson in the film uses a handheld game called Comer's Baseball Dexterity Puzzle to keep himself composed. The objective is to maneuver men onto each base and home plate within a minute to score a home run. Initially, 20th Century Fox Studio head Daryl F. Zanuck was dissatisfied with Otto Preminger's original ending and insisted on reshooting it. However, after a screening of the altered version left audiences confused, Zanuck relented and allowed Preminger to restore his original finale, acknowledging it as the key to the film's success. This decision marked a pivotal moment in the film's production, cementing Preminger's vision as the driving force behind its narrative integrity. In the world of filmmaking, Otto Preminger's 1944 production stands out it left a lasting impression through the captivating characters brought to life in the movie Laura. Vincent Price once questioned Preminger's directorial choices, to which he bluntly responded, Robin only knows nice people. I understand the characters in the movie. They're all heels, just like my friends. The casting process for this film faced opposition and decisions that shaped its final form. At age 38, Preminger, seeing Clifton Webb's performance in Blythe Spirit, decided to cast him as Waldo Lidecker, defying Daryl F. Zanuck's reservations. Zanuck had different actors in mind for key roles, but Preminger insisted on Gene Tierney, Clifton Webb, and Dana Andrews. Unfortunately, Laird Kreger, who was cast as Waldo Lidecker, passed away in December 1944 at the age of 31. Clifton Webb, making his screen return after a break since 1925, earned an Oscar nomination for his portrayal of Waldo Lidecker in the movie Laura, marking a significant moment in his career. Beyond the complexities of casting, the movie Laura secured its place in cinematic history. In June 2008, the American Film Institute ranked it fourth on the list of the 10 greatest mystery movies, solidifying its status as a timeless contribution to the genre. To sum up, the film not only challenged traditional casting choices, but also left a lasting impression on the mystery genre, earning recognition from the American Film Institute.